Hello everyone. So we have established in previous lectures that if you want to find out the future value of any amount that you're given in the present, then all you have to do is take that amount and multiply it by 1 plus r raised to the power t, where r is your annual interest rate, and t is the number of years that you're going out into the future. Now, Sometimes this expression right here, this 1 plus r raised to the power t, sometimes this is called the future value interest factor. And notice that I have subscripts r and t over here. What does that mean? This means that if you know what the value of r is, and if you know what the value of t is, then you can plug those numbers here, r and t, and you will have one numerical value for this expression. And so from a definitional standpoint, you might say, well, what is future value interest factor? Well, that's kind of boring. Put very simply, uh, it's the future value interest factor simply tells you how much one dollar would be worth t years out into the future if it is invested at an annual interest rate of r percent. You're asking, well, why do I need to know this? Well, here's why this might be useful. Notice that if uh, you are writing 1 plus r raised to the power t as future value interest factor, then really you are writing the future value formula as present value into FVIF RT, where again, all of this, all of this expression really is just 1 plus r raised to the power t. You're still wondering why I need this. Well, here's a reason. Sometimes in your textbooks, you will observe a table of this type where on the horizontal axis, you will have different values for interest rates. And uh, along this column, you will have these different values for T. And notice, notice if, I, if you take you back, we said that if you know the values of R and T, then all you need to do is plug them in here and you will get a numerical value for future value interest factor. And so at the back of your books, sometimes you will have what are called future value interest factor tables. And all these tables are really doing is that they're taking a value of R, they're taking some number, uh, some number for T, and then plugging it into that one plus R raised to the power T and populating this table. So for example, uh, this expression, let's take, uh, let's take this, exp this value right here this number right here. What is this? This number corresponds to an interest rate of 4% and t equals to 5. So literally how this value came up is that you went into this future value interest factor formula, which is 1 plus r raised to the power t, and you did for r, you plugged in 4, which is 4%, and you raised it to the power t, where t is 5, and that's, uh, that's going to amount to 1.2167. So now why is uh, knowing this future value interest factor form formula useful? Well, because if you are posed a question like this, like suppose you invest $500 in a bank account that pays an annual interest rate of 5%, what will be the worth of your investment in five years? You know that from a formula standpoint, you would say uh, future value, five years from now of 500 will be 500 into, and then you'll do interest rate is 5%, so 1.05 raised to the power five. What I'm saying to you is this, this portion has already been calculated for you in this table for interest rate of 5%, and you're going five years out into the future. You may as well have just gone into these tables and said 5%, five years. If you go over here, that number is 1.2763. So my point is that you could have just gone to these tables and simply said, look, I'm going to multiply this 500 with 1.2763. This would be the shortcut. So you wouldn't need to do any of this. You just do 500 multiplied by 1.2763 and arrived at your answer. And so this is why um, knowing what future value interest factor is useful because that can help you read the future value interest factor tables, which can then help you determine the future value of any amount for a given interest rate and a given value of T.